Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Rango. Rango is about a lizard voiced by Johnny Depp. He basically lives in a little tank. He, like, acts and he puts on shows for himself. Him and his tank are flown out of the car where he is traveling with the family he lives with, and he is thrown into the desert. He then travels to the town of Dirt, where he then becomes the sheriff after telling them all these tales of how he's this badass adventurer when he isn't at all, but he's such a great storyteller and actor, they believe him. It's a very routine, cliched plot, right? So then they make him the sheriff, and there's a water shortage, and the mayor's doing all this stuff, and it's very Chinatown. This second act was so kind of what you're supposed to do with this kind of a structured film. I almost felt detached from the second act. Like I even went to the bathroom. Usually film structure goes on a downward trajectory and like the first act is the best, the second act isn't as good, and the third act's the worst. And this film, it was almost like a loop. It was like, I really liked the first act, then it went second act, and then it went back up for a third. It just felt like sometimes they just overloaded stuff. I mean, I understand this is a big blockbuster-y, big expensive movie that they want to make a big return on and they obviously want to have as many jokes and have as much excitement as they can and I felt like that kind of hurt this film a little bit if it had kind of been more about the westerns and less about like Star Wars references and all that stuff with the bats and, and a lot of these studios like that aren't Pixar they need to not be so concerned with making a film that'll play well in Kmart and more concerned with making a good movie. And that's been always the problem with like DreamWorks, with Blue Sky, with all of them. It, it sucks when you're watching a film and it feels like it has to do something because that's what it's supposed to do. And I felt like this second act did exactly that. I think this movie is a good film. The character design is really, really amazing. And this is still very cartoony, but there's a sense of bizarre Already just from the character designs, there's a sense of the absurd. This movie is very strange and almost in a way that 90s cartoons like Eek the Cat and Rocco's Modern Life were. So I kind of like that. But also, it reminds me a lot of old Warner Brothers Bugs Bunny cartoons. I almost feel like that Johnny Depp is playing Bugs Bunny. They used his moons because they filmed it for 20 days and they all acted as the characters and I, I think that's how they recorded the voices that way, I'm not exactly sure. So it, it's not motion capture, it's more like just they filmed it for reference and stuff. I could tell like some of the movements were Johnny Depp's and he, he can really pull that off and for an actor who after Alice in Wonderland and all those other kooky performances kind of annoyed me for a while, I really liked him in this and a lot like Seth Rogen and Paul, I feel like these cartoon characters give them a way to reinvent themselves almost. He's always been someone who's used cartoon characters in his performance like he said with Captain Jack Sparrow, there was some Pepe Le Pew in there. There's skills in this I've seen him do, like in Benny and June when he was doing tributes to Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. Gore Verbinski, that cartoony style uh, that he already had in live action worked definitely with this film because it was animated. So I think he's a natural choice to do that. But I didn't get the, that distinct directorial voice that people like Brad Bird and Andrew Stanton and Pete Docter and even Wes Anderson more recently did. Because you can almost, in those films, like with Fantastic Mr. Fox, it almost feels like there's a little animated Wes Anderson who's directing the movie on set because it's such a Wes Anderson directed film. And this to me wasn't such a Gore Verbinski animated film. The lighting was just amazingly spectacular and that's because uh, the visual consultant on this was Roger Deakins, who is the visual consultant on How to Train Your Dragon and WALL-E. I think he does a great job. I don't know why he's always working for different studios every time. I hope he does more animated films because every time the camera work in it and the lighting is just absolutely fantastic. And the lighting and the camera work and animation is getting more and more interesting and I feel like he is definitely helping that go even further and it's great. And I would actually like to see other cinematographers be visual consultants on animated films and not just Deacons, although Deacons is like the best, so. Some people say this is too grown up for kids. I don't think that this movie has any problems for kids. It's not like that weird. It's, they might not get some of the references, but they didn't get the references in The Incredibles. I'm sure they didn't get every reference that was in Shrek. To say like, oh, the kids won't get the references, they won't enjoy it as much. I, I don't think it really even matters, because when I watched Tiny Toons as a kid, they referenced tons of stuff that I didn't get. For Gore Verbinski and the ILM doing animation like this, I think this is a good start. I think this is a great first film. However, I think they can learn a lot from this film and maybe make an even stronger film the next time. I definitely like that it wasn't 3D. It was like, oh, okay, I don't have to pay extra. So, if you have seen Rango and you would like to talk about it, then comment down there and uh, subscribe if you would like to. Rango, Rango. 
I like that part. 